My name is Isabella Ravel and I am a PhD student and research assistant here at the University of Sydney's Plant Breeding Institute in Narrabri. And I'm here to talk to you today about hybrid wheat. Uh, now this might be a concept that you may have heard of before, it's not very new, it's been around for a few decades now. Uh, but what makes our system different is we have a purely genetic system. It's not like the traditional methods of hybrid wheat breeding which involve chemical applications and complex methods. Ours is um, quite simple and new. So I'll be taking you through how that system works and what we're doing with it and some of the potentially really exciting things that we have to come. So here we are at the beginning of our hybrid wheat program and where it all starts is with our genetic system. So what makes that different is um, hybrid wheat traditionally doesn't use a genetic system, it uses chemical applications and other complicated methods that make it quite expensive and um, difficult to do on a mass scale. What is so fascinating about our system is being completely genetic and encompassed in the one seed, essentially, uh, it's quite economically viable and hopefully we can really make some big strides in the industry as a result. Anyway, so it all starts with these guys here. Now, you'll notice that they are blue, not white. But don't fear, let me explain why. So, what we do is we plant this blue seed in the ground and as it grows and goes to grain fill, it actually segregates to something that looks a bit like this. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. So this blue seed, every time we plant it, we're going to get blue and white seed. So we use that to keep our genetic system going. But the really cool thing is this white seed in here, as you can see, is completely male sterile, which basically means it doesn't produce any pollen. So what we can do with that white seed is plant it in strips and cross it with whatever wheat we like to create our hybrids. So again, we plant our blue seed, we get this mix, then I thankfully have this beautiful machine right next to me, which I can tip through and it will color sort for me and separate the blues from the whites. So then I can go ahead and plant my blue seed to make more white seed and my white seed to make some hybrids. So now we'll move on and have a little chat about what that looks like in the paddock. So here we are in our hybrid F1 production system, which is how we make our hybrids. So right next to me here is our white seed that you saw earlier, which is sterile. And what we've done is we've planted it in strips right next to our male seed, which is just normal fertile wheat. And what happens is as these males flower, they transfer their pollen to the sterile wheat and from that we get our F1, which then goes into testing the following season. So right now where we're standing, we are surrounded by over a hundred different F1 combinations that will go into testing next year. So hopefully we'll get some good things out of that. All right, now the part you've all been waiting for, the hybrids themselves. But first, let me explain why we are even bothering and what is so good about these hybrids anyway. A hybrid is the direct offspring of two parents. There is a phenomenon that sometimes occurs in hybrids called heterosis or hybrid vigor. In a nutshell, this is where the hybrid outperforms both the parents in yield performance and adaptiveness to the environment. You may have seen it already in crops such as hybrid maize or canola. And as you can see in the videos on your screen, there are some wheat hybrids here doing just that. Now, despite all this, heterosis is comprised of a number of complicated mechanisms that we are still researching to try and understand, but we, have already seen, we are already seeing above average yield gains and yield potentials exceeding 20%, and we aren't even close to hitting the limit yet. All right, well, that's all I have for you. I hope you've enjoyed uh, my little spiel on hybrid wheat. Um, plenty of exciting stuff happening, and uh, if you guys have any questions or queries or would like to find out a bit more, please feel free to email myself or Richard Rathowen and our emails should be at the bottom of the screen. Thanks guys for your time.